tell us whether or not they are ridiculous. If I were to say the Philadelphia Eagles are the biggest threat to the 49ers in the NFC, is that ridiculous? No, that's not ridiculous. Look, this football team is loaded. I mean, quite frankly, it's loaded. They have n done nothing but add firepower to the offense. You know, obviously with the addition of Saquon Barkley, Kellen Moore, the new offensive coordinator, has to be the guy that ties it all together. They cleaned up in the draft in the secondary with Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene. And Vic Fangio, we all know, is one of the greatest defensive coordinators of all time. They just now need to produce on the football field, so that's not ridiculous at all. Well, let me go to Chicago then. Yeah, so... I wanted to talk about this. You guys know I'm high on a lot of NFC teams this year. Uh, the Packers, the Lions, the Eagles, the 49ers, of course. Um, and I'm probably forgetting a team right now. Um, and and so this is such an interesting question. Like, I don't get bogged down into the whole who's the biggest or who's the number one, number two. Like, I, I will always say this. I put all these teams in groups, right? I put the Packers, the Eagles, the Lions um the 49ers for that matter um all in groups because again it, it comes down to the playoffs it comes down to such little things of how is this game going to unfold who's the home team what's the health situation like um is is one of is a key player playing but is he a little bit banged up like what what is the story here right wait, wait how how is this all unfolding and it's impossible to know in june june 5th is what i'm recording this video so it just becomes very difficult but I will say this, it's definitely not a ridiculous take at all to say that the Eagles are the biggest threat to the 49ers because more than anything, they're the only team in that bunch, in that group that has actually been to a Super Bowl and has competed. Really only the 49ers and the Eagles have actually competed against the Chiefs and realistically almost won in the Super Bowl. Right, that that's just the reality. They're the they're the only team. So, any of those other teams, as great as they may be, they still have more growth. They still have to prove that they can win, either get to the NFC Championship game, win the NFC Championship game, get to the Super Bowl, and prove that they can play in the Super Bowl. Because the reality is, is we don't know what that looks like. And again, I'm super high on the, on the Detroit Lions, on the Packers, all of this. But we have no idea what Jordan Love does in the Super Bowl. We've never seen it before. We have no idea how Dan Campbell or Ben Johnson, you guys know I'm super high on Ben Johnson, how, he's, how he calls a game in the Super Bowl. We have no idea. But we know exactly what the 49ers are capable of doing in a Super Bowl, multiple Super Bowls. We know exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles are able to do in a Super Bowl. We know exactly what Jalen Hurts can do, what AJ Brown can do. Like we we know what these what this team can do. And people are super low on the Eagles, which I think is ridiculous because they are stacked. They do have an amazing roster. They have only improved. Like now people are trying to bring down their their DC like he's like he's past his prime and he's done and that the Miami Dolphins couldn't get rid of him fast enough and it's like whoa 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 whoa. Since when are the Miami Dolphins a highly run organization here? What is their track record for success? The answer is not at all. So let's not use what another team like the Miami Dolphins uses as a frame of reference as to how important a player is or isn't. Like, let, let's let's tap the brakes there. Um, and so I just think, again, like Riddick uh, put up, like he mentioned, from the draft, what they were able to build from defensively with a, with an actual bona fide without a doubt defensive coordinator and also oc again i feel like i always have to say this i understand that people don't want to say that kellen moore is this you know next level genius who's going to take over the nfl but to deny that he's not a good or even great offensive coordinator is just absurd to me so when you're adding all these weapons both offensively defensively you're upgrading from a coordinating standpoint how can that team not be better? How can they not be more successful? If they were able to limp into the playoffs, how can you expect them to not even be better? Considering the year before that, when they had a great DC, had a great OC, and they were able to get to the Super Bowl. I'm failing to see why they still wouldn't then be one of the top threats in the NFL. Um, I, I, I not only do I not 
not only do I think that the Eagles are one of the biggest threats to the 49ers, but I think they're the, one of the biggest threats in the NFL to win a Super Bowl, whether it be the Chiefs, the Ravens, whoever, the Texans. Like, you just can't really pick apart the Eagles roster. You just can't. And if people want to say, like, oh, well, what about Jalen Hurts? Like, we know what he can do in big moments. We've seen it. We know that he can step up. So you just can't ignore the the Eagles at all. You just can't. And the, and the reality is what Jalen Hurts has done um, at the biggest stage is not something that even Brock Purdy has done, not something that uh, Jared Goff, Jordan Love, any of these quarterbacks. And again, I am high on all these quarterbacks. So if you're watching this and you're a Packers fan or a Lions fan or whatever, like don't take me as, as hating on them. But you do have to give credit where credit is due for Philly. But again, I'm also not going to sit here and say that the Eagles are 100% coming out of the NFC. No one can stop them. They're unstoppable. I'm not saying that either. I haven't said that about a single team because I really do think that so many of these teams are evenly matched. And when all these teams are evenly matched, whether it be the 49ers, the Eagles, the Lions, the Packers, whoever, maybe the Rams are a dark horse, that's then when experience comes in and health. And that's when the margin of error gets a lot smaller. It's a lot easier for the 49er or for the Packers to beat up on the Cowboys, right? The margin of error was huge for the for the Packers because they were such a better team, better coached, um, better executed, just everything, top to bottom better. That margin of error gets a lot smaller with the 49ers. Some of those tip balls that Brock Purdy threw that could have been intercepted you, the, the Packers couldn't have afforded to drop those balls. Otherwise, they they win that game if they actually catch it. And vice versa, 49ers with the Lions, that margin of error was so small. Dan Campbell couldn't afford to go for it on fourth down and not convert. He couldn't, they, the, 40, the, the, the Lions couldn't afford for a ball to bounce off Ayuk's head or wherever the heck it ended up bouncing and then in his hands. The Lions couldn't afford that. The 49ers couldn't afford having a Christian McCaffrey fumble the ball, having a ball bounce off the back of the leg on a punt against the Chiefs. The margin of error it just gets so small in those situations, and they are impossible to predict. Impossible to predict because you have no idea, especially this far out. So I just look at it where all of these teams are, are can easily beat each other on any given day, but you do give the edge to the 49ers and you do give the edge to the Eagles over some of these other up and coming teams because they've done it before because they have the experience. And that's why it'll be really interesting though, because if the Packers and the Lions are coming out the gate and they're dominating and the Lions have really shown that they are not this one hit wonder and that they are going to continue to get better and better and better. And they're the number one seed, right? Cause everyone just assumes that the 49ers are the number one seed that the 49ers are, are have the highest percentage odds to win the Super Bowl. I think it goes the 49ers, the Chiefs, the Lions, Cowboys, and Packers, or uh, Eagles, I think is what it is. Um, but all within like a couple percentage points of one another. So not, this isn't, you know, super far out. And so I just think that that's where it all comes down to where we're talking about percentage points here. And that's what the Vegas odds, right? Those guys know everything seemingly when it comes to odds and that's what they have it down they have it just within a, a couple percentage points of one another and that's just where we know that the margin of error is so small and it becomes again wildly unpredictable is aj brown fully healthy or is he a little banged up and now he's like slightly slower coming off the line of scrimmage um is jordan love just bawling out of his mind coming off the stretch of his best football he's ever played in his career going into the playoffs, right? It's just like, where are all these teams at these moments? Are they limping into the playoffs? Are they dominating, right? How's everything going? And to me, that is how it all will unfold come time playoffs, which is why it is impossible to predict this far out, but still entertaining conversation nonetheless. But that is what I really see at the end of the day. I see the Eagles, the 49ers, the Packers and the Lions as the top teams in the NFC and it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch it really is because these going into those games i don't care who you're a fan of whether you're an eagles fan a lions fan whoever you just there's no way anyone could be confident of the outcome 
You just can't be. There's just there's just no way. And if you are, then you know what? Then you are um you are I I don't even know, honestly, because I just don't see how anyone could have that have a, a level of confidence. Because I know the 49ers feel that they're pretty much they're guaranteed to get it get through the NFC and I, I call lies on that because that's just there's just no way. They just got on by last season. So um, and again, people want to count out the Eagles because they, they didn't end the season as well as they did the season before. So they're like, well, they're done. And it's just, it, it's just always interesting to see the, the way how people's minds works with regards to who they think is going to be a legit contender and the reasons why. Um, but yeah, but those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think that the Eagles are the biggest threat to the 49ers? Um, do you think that the 49ers should even be held up as the number one where other teams need to be a threat to them? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights, but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.